Let's get back. So I tried looking for mods, only found skin ones. And so that means I can only play this like an hour, maybe an hour and a half each time. And what was my assassin contract? And whenever I have to run, I'm gonna have to do it on the rooftops. Otherwise I'll get seasick. Quick, quick out. Still shaking quite a bit. I'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> At least I'm moving a lot more, you know, a lot less in a straight line. Somewhat compensate for it. Probably a bit exciting. No, can't do that. Again, same place. Captain Kenway, just in time. I'll see you back aboard. Okay, I don't have a boat yet. Disappeared. He seemed to have disappeared. Incredible.
Who's Esteban? Why would you break his jaw? God damn it. Yeah, you have no finesse. Okay. Come, let's have a toast. Okay. Claiming what's due. God, sink me for this pittance. One thousand reals for those maps. That's what? A hundred pound at most. How's a man supposed to become rich in these times with a miser like Torres running the world? Have you ever, um, you ever worked on a plantation before? You know what I'm thinking? I'd like to see this observatory the governor's going on about. He said it were like a device that could follow people around and show where they were. <laughs> a ludicrous idea. Imagine my wife with such an advantage over me. And imagine what a thing like that would be worth. Sell that to the right person and I'd be the richest pirate privateer in the West Indies. <laughs> I'll catch you up on it. There's a sage in that house I must speak to in private. I like my line. Stay out of combat, kill guards from stocking zones. Okay. Like this. <laughs> Yeah, so this means this place is going to be a bit slower than usual. Oh, there's someone coming. How about I switch sides? How about I switch? Eagle vision to the way I use focus in Horizon Zero Dawn. Can't let you live. Yeah, we're not there. Okay, we are there yet. When you're in the hiding spot, the corner or at the corner on is a s what? I saw the whistle and attacked me by enemy. Yeah, I know. Feel <coughs> the key. Get rid of that one. Maybe even that one. Hmm, box. Let's get rid of both of them and take the box. Oh, he's walking around. Give me a second.
Yes, there's a bird in the bush. Ah, damn it. How the hell do I know when I can stab? Come here. I think the camera is slightly shaking even now. Why? Camille. Okay, don't come here. God damn it! Look at the Boston prompt, otherwise I won't make it. Over here. Uh, ten assassinations. Okay. Let's go for air assassinations. I don't feel like it.
hier het worden van een greedy mofo. something? I didn't say anything. Stay out of open conflict. One, two. Look away. Look away. Gunners. Well, what do you see, Gunners? <laughs> Can I pick up the body and oh gunner, it's on the tower. Can I pick this guy up and put him in the closet? <laughs> nope. Really? You're just gonna stand there? Thank you. Okay, I need everyone to look away for a little bit while I climb the tower. Ah, oh, damn it. Lo veo directamente para disparar. Ah. 
¡Está por aquí! ¡No bajéis el ritmo! Open spot, open spot, anything. What the hell happened here? I didn't do that. What is your true name, Rogue? It's a... Uh... <sighs> Captain Pissoff. Rien que pauvre Pison. Where is the sage? Did you set him free? I had nothing to do with that. Much as I wish I did. Take him to the ports. Send him to Sevilla with the treasure fleet. Oh, wait now! I delivered your treasures, didn't I? You did, yes. But you robbed us of Duncan Walpole. How did you know? Yeah, screw you. How did you know? <laughs> a despicable display. <clears throat> this task part is a ruined man, Caroline. Unfit for life on land, much less at sea. If he goes to the West Indies, it's you who'll suffer. Father! Father! Come, love. Up with you now. That old muckworm! He's wrong about me! I hope it's so. You believe me, don't you? Can you not see me? Standing out there on the deck of a ship that's sliding into port. And there I am, a man of quality. With a thousand doubloons spilling from my pockets. Like drops of rain. I can see it. Mm-hmm. La cena, cometela rápido. What are you in for? You hungry? <laughs> Can't believe it was that easy. Now what's your plan, mate? Find my weapon and steal the ship. Que Dios nos ayude. No me gusta la pinta de esta tormenta que se acerca. Parece que se está desviando al oeste, hacia el Golfo. Quizá estemos a salvo. Wait. Mission is kill girls from behind corners. Sure. come from Can I have a piece of that don't 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 okay never mind Come here. Okay, they didn't take my money.
damn, that's a lot of gold. That's a ton of gold. We're stealing a bridge. Hey, take what you need. It won't be a minute. I need my blades. In the proper set of armor. There's many prisoners held on these ships. Set them free, and they'll sail with us, no question. That's the point. So that's the idea, then. Free what men we can, then find a path here to flee it. Aye, there's a brig in this fleet. I'll make my way to it. No, 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 get down. No, no, you idiot, no! Oh no! Okay, switch to Ample Conflict. Ow! And stab. How do I get the prisoners out of there? Oh, prisoners over here. There's a catch to this favor. You're sailing with me. I follow you to hell for this, mate. Cool. That's nine out of eighteen. This boat next. Oh, you guys had it. Que nos está retrasando. Ya deberíamos haber hecho la mitad de la ruta a las Bermudas. Oro, plata, jade, tabaco, lo que se te ocurra. Y agua qué? Comida. Me preocupa más mi estómago que las arcas del rey. Show some example. You are no longer welcome. Come on, lads. If we're to drown today, it won't be here. 
Nice tattoos. Okay. Uh, excuse me. He'll save you here. This is a great time for air double assassination. Wanna get back at them? There's a brig nearby just waiting for us to take her. Hi, Voidy. <laughs> Am I allowed to call you Voidy? Cool. This is tall. I'm feeling a bit sick actually because of this game, but I'm trying to fight it and have some fun anyway. Uh, rope. Rope! Ooh, I like this ship. This is my ship, and you are not welcome. my ship. Lime it. Come on. Lime this.
Oh, there was some guy up there. Sorry, mate, didn't see you. Quite a bit high up. <coughs> Destroy. That guy? There it is. Please allow me to replay missions with interesting modifiers. Keep in mind that progression saving is then turned off. To activate the cheat, open the pause menu, go into Abstergo challenges, and select the cheats. Well, not now. Okay, did my air assassinations. Next up is the assassin's contacts. Okay, what cheats are available? Ah, that's my reward for challenges. Got it. Celestial navigation? What the hell does that mean? Yeah, hooks are nice. I want the rope. <clears throat> Not sure I can get the rope. Comes speed. Fine, prisoners. Voy a ir a lo más alto. Esto es una locura. Cálmate, no pasará nada. En unos minutos partiremos. And the way? And the way? Excuse me. No. Okay. Double assassinations. Five double assassinations complete. Dive into water from a height of 45 meters. I can do that. We're going topside. 
be ready. Uh, also be careful. Climb the freaking ladder. Kill the captain. Kill the ship. Okay. You. Lay aboard, lads. Save your singing for Davy Jones, you jagabats. It's a hard wind coming. The man speaks true. You lot weigh anger. As for the rest, half on the foremast and half at the main. Let's outrun this hurricane. Oh, yeah. Keep watch on those galleons. See, they don't give us trouble. They won't. Far too slow for this weather. Enemy fire! Fire! Weakest right there, coming! Bark any orders you think wise, mate. We're up against it here. These men know their place. They'll see us home. They cannot stand against us, sir! I think a ship using a swivel gun. Help run! Help run! Ah! Look out, man! I see it! Log waves. Place them up front to get no damage. If you fail to face them, hold to brace yourself. Okay, I think we want to place them up front, but okay. Brace! Water spout! Water spout? Where? Stay clear of that thing! Where? Oh. Damn. Nice. Water spout. Are we on full sail? We're going against the wind. Douse all but me! Drowned it all up! Water spout, man! Stay away! I'm trying. We're going against the wind. It's not looking good. Steady as she goes, man. Come stay as you can. No, oh, we're being pushed. Come we're on. being pushed. Come on! Killer wave to starboard! Okay, I see it. Head on, head on. Brace. Look at him go! Did we escape? I think the weather failed. Okay, slightly better. And good winds. <sighs> oh, God, free light! We made it! What a mess, Jesus! The 
by God, we pulled this one straight from the teeth of Neptune. I'm Edward. Much thanks for your aid back there. Adewale. Adewale. You ever been to Nassau, Adewale? Not yet. Would you like to? By God, she took some knocks, didn't she? I think I'll keep her. All hands aft, lads! We're taking this one home! I gotta fix her up, repaint her, rename... ...new flag. Good while it lasted. I've made my choice, Addy. I'm calling her the Jackdaw. A sly bird I loved as a child back in Swansea. A dark little creature, no? Yes. Did it rub you wrong when I took this brig as mine own? <laughs> it was the sort of rub I have learned to enjoy, sailing among faces of such fairness. <laughs> That's true. Most of these men wouldn't accept you as a captain. So what fair role would complement such unfairness? Quartermaster, first mate. I'll be your quartermaster. Nothing less. All right. And as quartermaster, have you any immediate counsel for this Tyro captain? Rest and repast would do us good before Nassau. Water for drinking. Hunting for food and repairs. Yes. Well reasoned, sir. Hunting, it shall be. We'll find a decent place to drop anchor. Cool. I spied a few items in the hold earlier. Powder and a few pistols. I think I'll fashion a second holster if I can. <laughs> it's a good start. One you find laughable. Could we talk a moment about the condition of the ship? What's the trouble? I had a walk about the gun deck this morning and couldn't stand for what I saw. A clutter of lint stocks heaped like tinder. And one with a slow match, still burning. Christ. And just nearby, two barrels of gunpowder, closer than man and wife. Fit to explode at the touch of a spark. We'll stow ours good and proper. As for the cannons, they might as well be tossed. Clogs touch holes in need of scraping, corrosion on the bodies, barrel swabs as naked as knives, and breech ropes so rotted, I could use them for knitting yarn. Why can't I release the thing? Controls, ship controls, release wheel. Ah, oh, okay. Is we need good equipment kept in fine condition, but we cannot win every battle with snares and shouts. So worry about your own armaments when it suits you, but don't forget about your jackdaw as well. Obviously. Uh, where do I go down below? Going up, or is below? Hmm. I guess we have to anchor with her. No, oh, indeed. Microphone. We'll make it a point to keep this ship and its crew in fine condition. Why do I get this camera all of a sudden? What's with this? Go around that island. Yeah, tiny uh, atoll. Sail. Is that an enemy ship? Wait, there's a fragment over there? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ghost the gallants and royals! Dark skies and rough seas there! Cards! Gallants! Royals! Studs! What the hell is that? So this is the open world thing. Okay. Ghost the royals! Cards! 
Muzzle that duck, my trunks. Give me a second. game is like the most open world open worldy Assassin's Creed yet. I think I love it. As long as it wouldn't shake so much. Captain has the helm. Okay. Shoot that thing. Okay. Turn. 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 And shoot. And Shoot. Fire! Off target! Yeah, no shit. Awaiting order, sir! Shoot that thing. The smoke is wonderful. Fire! Oh, come on! Hit the pains out! Let's go! Okay, let's try that thing. Let's catch some wind, lads! Will I run it over? Is that how it's supposed to go? Captain, look Lord, back! Some wrecks cargo adrift here, sir. Brace uh, yourselves! Ooh, metal. Oh, what, I have to do the same with the atoll? Won't it ruin the ship? On the ground. Cliff ahead, sir. Yeah. Okay, so how do I get that cargo? More sail. Full sail. Let's go. Actually, a lovely way of looking at it. Oh, this is where I want to dock. Okay. Clues up. Eat her sticks. Consuls in. Clue up. Ow. We're here. Are they following me? In, in, go in. We're sailing straight for land. All sail. She'll take it. Close down! Hold in the stuntel! Ease the spanker! Hold down! Sail to Abaco Island. Is this it? Island. 
chest level unlocked. One is killed and skilled, also was killed and skinned. You can hunt animals and then skin them to collect animal goods. These resources allow you to craft new items and upgrades for Edward. You can use Eagle Vision to easily spot animals. The crafting menu can be accessible from the pause menu. Shoot an iguana and assassinate an ocelot. That's an ocelot. They'll assassinate an ocelot. How do I get up top? Is that a fragment? Yeah, it is. And up and fragment. How do I see the thing? Robot. Robot? Oh, cool. Uh, vantage points. Over there. <coughs> That's a vantage point. That's a vantage point. How do I see my challenges for this specific thing? Island information. Ah, oh, okay. Chests. And two more fragments and secrets. Okay, I see the chest. Oh. Open the chest. Then fragment. Shoot an iguana. Iguana bone. Uh, over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. One more fragment in secrets. That's a treasure map. What is that? Wait, fragment. Wait, out bottle. What's with the bottle? <laughs> Peter Beckford, the elder of my employer, I must say something, for it was owing to his connections. They came to find such troubled dealings. Peter Beckford was a man of great charisma and pride. In 1662 he had come to Jamaica in just ten years, had fast procured himself a sizable portion of land, which he sowed with cane as early as he was able. On my coming into his orbit, he owned, claimed all about him, one of the largest private holdings of land in all the world, rivaling only kings and emperors for his largesse. 
the same surplus applied to the number of slaves in his employ. Whereas he had arrived in Jamaica with a complement of three, he now owned the better part of 300. A shrewd and relentless man of business, Mr. Beckford was known also to be subservient to a temper of cyclonic power. Wrath, fury, and enmity were his primary means of settling arguments that could not be concluded in Mr. Beckford's immediate favor. He was, however, always kind to me and as gracious a man as one could hope an employer to be. But this I put down to my status in his eyes. He was a traditional man with a respect for rank and breeding. In earlier times he had been governor de facto of the island, and though statesman no longer upon my arrival he still bore all the signs of a man who felt in his natural duty to lead. Further, his political connections he valued as deeply as his sugar and the money it brought him, and it was in this capacity, following the arrival of a Spanish soldier, that I met the man who would change my life for the worse forever, a young man named Doriano Torres. Folio 34R, the second of four extant pages of the mysterious Voynich manuscript stolen from Peter Beckford's collection at some point after 1705. Significance unclear. Shanties. Yeah, we'll hear the shanties later. The Sage. Abstergo archive contains a few references to men called the Sage or a Sage. But they are few and far between. Each sighting seems to refer to a different person living in a vastly different time and location. The earliest example was found on Sumerian clay tablet in cuneiform script while the latest survives only as a footnote in one of Loriano Torres' own journals, dated January 1704. In all, according to Abstergo's existing research, seven different sages seem to have graced the world stage in the past 1200 years. The real number is likely higher. Perhaps the strangest aspect connecting each of these various sightings is the fact that, in every case, visual descriptions of each sage are remarkably similar. So similar, in fact, that one wouldn't be faulted for assuming they were talking about a single immortal man. However, in two of the seven concitations, explicit mention is made of their death and burial. Are we therefore dealing with some bizarre form of reincarnation, or some simpler explanation that eludes us at present? More research is required. Math. You don't look so good. Fortune's favor. Treasure maps. Find treasure maps on explorers' cadavers. They will lead you to a specific place on an island. Dig there and you might find money or plans to upgrade your ship. Use there, press 9, select the maps and press W to open them. The coordinates will lead you to the location and the image will help you find the, the right spot. Features are successful from the second screen. of trees, big rock, near the small rock. 749 to 625. Um, what do I just... Mark. How do I get coordinates? Viewpoint not synced. Point synced. Album list. General store. Plan. Cadaver. Naval drop. Letter. Edward. <laughs> Animals. Diving bell. Damn, there's a lot of things. Okay, so I think we need to go over there. Wait, never assassinate, never assassinate! No! Can I climb this thing?
Okay. So add there clump of trees. No, can't have cram. Seven four nine six two nine. Reading this seven four nine six two five. Yeah, I think it's over here. No, it's not even on this island. Ugh. That's a lot. Okay, grab the fragment. Wait, I didn't grab all the fragments. No, I did not. I have the fragment and I will assassinate an ocelot. Excuse me for moving the camera so much, but the only way I can prevent myself from not getting sick. We go on a ladder. I want to track iguanas. Uh, not iguanas, ocelots. Thing. Okay, I got you where I want you. Come on. Come on. Where do they all go? God damn it, stop scaring them. Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, kitty. Okay. Progress tracker. Craft a new holster, craft a health upgrade. That was upgrade. Barely see the difference. I'll go with the privateer when I have the money for it. Pistol set. Other ancho. Privateer cutlasses. British colonial cutlass. Crafting. Ocelot pelt. And health upgrade. Guana level. Oh, 
Captain. Doctor of Craig. Was following the main story to unlock. Moto available in shop. Sure. Oh. Of course I can't buy it. And last fragment. I think I get it. Okay. Island complete. We got a map which was a 749625. 749. 749625 is over here somewhere. Name Northwest. Also, West, not Lord North. Hey, Captain, find what you need. My needs and wants are oceans apart, mate. But I did fashion myself a new holster. All I need now is a pistol to lie in it. Ooh. How about this one? Yeah. Taken from the holds, just as you said. A little more than a blowpipe. But they'll do. So, are we rested? Or should we idle a while longer? Best way, anchor. I think the crew is itching to reach civilization. You'll find no civilization in NASA. But it's a fine place to be merry all the same. Multi pistols. Yeah. Let's do less damage, but interrupt the texts. Main sails! Pull down! Pull down! Pull, pull for all your work! Wait, it's an unpermissive environment now? Who's shooting what now? I'm gonna stop now. Wait, cargo. Loose and swim too. Stunsels, let's. Yeah, the ship business is a lot better than you know, Assassin's Creed 3. To larboard, sir. Looks like booty. Briefing all tops. Pull, pull all sail. Wait. There's a man overboard. Reef the topsails and gallants. Reef the foremen. Do they see a man overboard? Yep, I did. I think I did. Is that a raft? I think it is a raft. Human flotsam, Captain. Human flotsam. <laughs> Human flotsam. Okay. I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna stop now because I have other things I need to do. But so far I'm enjoying this and I'm not feeling that bad. Maybe I can get back to it a bit later today.
and if I do, you'll just see me right now. Okay. Of course, we will sail for the question mark first. Even in full sail, to use travel speed and go even faster. Neat. I'm going to assume that everyone wants to kill me, but apparently they do. Wait, man of about human flotsam. They are firing, sir. Brace yourself. Trump. Metal. Metal is nice. Human flotsam. All Douse those gallons. Hold. Hold. As much sail as you can! Cargo up ahead. Call in the stuntel! What do we have Trim here? Come off the wind, my boys! Ease her! Bearing hard for cliffs, Captain! Call them in! Get off the wind! Bring it all, sir! Come and tight! Okay, so we've got Tavern, Viewpoint, and two contracts. Let's see what we can do around here. Oh my god, I'm running on land. Treasure Hunter, stay out of combat. Spanish Expedition is looking for a lost artifact on this island. The leader of the group is a Templar financier. Kill him before he finds this artifact. It's somewhere on this island. Just a one, right? No, there's a two. They sell 
Drink. So, Edward Kenway is technically not an assassin, but he has legal vision. Or did he get Eagle Vision? But it's only those who come from the Altair line. Got nothing. Yeah, that is gonna look very deep. No? Nothing? Harbor Master. It is on this island. Oh, there's a specific place on this island. Local officer. Huh. I think I'm just wanted enough. I only trade with ships' captains. And I'm not. You want me part of me? The doggo? Good doggo. <laughs> Same animation as with Assassin's Creed 3. Okay. Wait. Where is that? That's where my target is? Seriously? Chest, one more fragment, three secrets. The Gamma Diary Extract. Extra from the diary of Vasco de Gamma, unlikely owner or scholar of the Voynich manuscript of one of its copies, taken from the collection of Peter Beckford. Adewale. God damn it. Adewale. 
692 Trinidad died unknown. Born to enslaved Algoni parents in Yoruba, Adewale was sold to owner of a prosperous plantation before his teens. He remained on this plantation or in the field until his mid teens, always scheming of ways to escape his predicament but uneasy with the prospect of living life as a fugitive. Then fortune struck giving Adewale the sign he needed at some point near his 16th birthday. A group of buccaneers raided the plantation, robbing it of raw cane, refined sugar, and as many reals as they could find. Seeing this an opportunity, they grabbed a crate of sugar and hauled it aboard one of the longboats that the buccaneers had rowed ashore. Surprised to see a slave among them, the buccaneers were nevertheless thankful for the aid and welcomed Ade among them. But they sailed with this first group of men for many years, quickly learning the ways of a seaman. Grateful for the chance to develop his own skills and chase his own passions, and though his life among buccaneers was not free of the usual bigotry of the era, but they found the prejudice to be more confrontational than restrictive. In 1715, misfortune struck a cool blow when the ship that it was aboard struck a shallow sandbar near the port of Havana. The buccaneers, mostly British at the time, tried desperately to free the triumphed vessel, but after catching sight of an approaching Spanish galleon, abandoned ship only to be torn apart by schools of circling bull sharks. Ade made peace with his fate and stood his ground. Taken to Havana for questioning and inspection, Spanish authorities eventually decided to send Ade Wale to Spain, where they felt he would make an excellent interpreter, owing to his fluent command of Spanish, English, and French. Some weeks later, they loaded him into one of the galleons that made up the perennial treasure convoy en route to Seville. Carolyn Scott. Yeah, we know about her. Duncan Walpole, born 1679, died 1715. Second cousin to Robert Walpole, Britain's first Prime Minister, Duncan was raised in relative comfort and ease until his 18th birthday, whereupon he joined the British Royal Navy as a midshipman with dreams of becoming a full officer. His immoderate temper and his impulsiveness, however, stymied a swift ascension and he grew impatient with his progress. After three years, his interest in the Navy had dwindled to nothing. With his heart set on finding a post with the East India Company, he had a chance meeting with a fellow sailor whom he had come to respect and admire, and it was this sailor who introduced Walpole to the Assassin Order and all its teaching. Leary at first, Duncan soon took to this secret order with a fervor and drive that he had not known in the Navy, and as his skills increased, so too did his reputation. But Temper and impulsiveness, coupled with a growing arrogance, were always a liability, and he was known for his frequent clashes with the elders of the British Assassin Order. Still, he was a valuable ass asset to the Order, so much so that in 1714, mentor asked him to sail for the West Indies, rendezvous with the Brotherhood there, and meet with her mentor Atabi. Atabai. Walpole accepted this position with eagerness and departed within a month. The Assassin of England never heard from him again. I see it. Curious incident at sea. How about I wait on this until I have more? Edward Kenway. El Tiburon. Born unknown, died unknown. <coughs> Almost nothing is known about El Tiburon, the shark, outside the what we have seen from his limited intersections with the life of Edward Kenway. His unwavering loyalty to his employer, Lorena Torres, could possibly indicate some familial connection, but there is no benefit to speculations of this sort. If we have any interest in learning more about this silent sentinel, our best bet would be to locate a descendant of Torres himself and walk our way back through the governor's life until we find a useful convergence. But apart from this, I doubt we'll have much luck. Julian Ducas. 1682 died unknown. Nephew of the buccaneer Jean Ducasse, Julian was born in Montpellier, France. He took after his uncle's example and took to sea at a young age. 
eventually joining him in a few skirmishes during the war for Spanish secession. Fighting on the side of the French and by proxy on behalf of King Philip of Spain, Ducasse's skill as a gunner improved rapidly, even as he grew wildly disillusioned with the monarchy and its obsession with lineage and breeding over raw talent and skill. In 1704, ordered by his superior officers to join his uncle and hundreds of French troops in what would become known as the Battle of Valle Moloch, Ducasse opted instead to desert his post and seek his fortunes in the New World. First, he threw in with slave traders in Africa and for a year made a modest profit off the venture. He was never comfortable with the cruelty and detachment the job required, and so departed for the West Indies in search of yet another vocation. For the next ten years, the cast around the West Indies as a hired gun, working for whomever had the coin and confidence to pay him, even prizing the value of intelligence and skill, ever prizing the value of intelligence and skill over mere reputation and breeding. Lucas eventually found his way into the company of Lorenzo Torres of Cuba, in whom he found a friend and confidant. Okay, there is boxes over there. Let's try and avoid the camera shake as much. As humanly possible. And let you can make quite a bit of money by kicking boxes. That's what I intended, but okay. Now that's booty. Okay. I'm currently on five seven four seven eighteen. On five seven seven twenty. Okay. Apparently there's a lot to go though. I see no further immediate concerns. Oh, I need to do the tavern? Okay. Let's do the tavern. If I must. <laughs> games do we have here? Such violence. I best get home. Oh, this thing. Will it actually work this time? Cowboy Checkers, Nine Men Morris. The board game. Yeah, I'm familiar with the rules. Question, will it allow me to play? Yes, I'm going first. I'll bet 50. Let's see. Yeah, I thought so. I'm 
I'm just gonna put one here. And then I put one there. And one there. Okay, make a move. That's a good question. Why did you do that? I can move this one here. This is the only two moves I have. Oh crap, uh, oh crap. Oh crap. He's two moves away from getting one. And I can't stop it. Shit. And I have no other move. Really? That's weird. What are you doing? Oh crap. Okay, prevent him from moving. You can still do that. Son of a... I'm stuck. I'm totally stuck. The problem with this game is once, once you get an advantage, you keep winning. Well, yeah, I see many of those. Okay, I'm bad at this game. I think that's it for now. Should I fast travel to boat? If I walk here, it's faster. Get the main spree! Men's loose, you have 
the news! Barbary command! Sir! There's loot floating here! Tops! Gallants! Royal! Fly, my pretties! Human flotsam! Clues up! Ease her sticks! Ease the spanker! Hold down! Thing. Yeah, I want to dock. Dock. Off the wind. Hold down and crew up. Pull those men. Captain's in the water. Captain's in the water. Just one fragment. Come on, move it. Captain has the helm. Let out some sail! Every last... Sailing by night. What is this place? Shipwreck? Shorten sail! Get off the squall! Leave the mains! Clue up gallons! Keys off the wind! Call it all safe! What do you mean not yet available? There's a thing here. Captain's helm, loose and catch. Can't there's so many open question marks to explore.
Well, that was worth something. There's too many of them. Let's head to Nassau. Wind is shaping up for a big blow, sir. Be it clear. chests on the other side. Yeah, and remember the ships do not have reverse. Okay, we go this way. Ow! Excuse me. Sorry. Human flotsam. I'll go overboard. Douse all but me! Larboard! Floating booty there for the taking, all sir! All the Every inch of sand. Level to Lord Nasa, yeah. Nasa, Bahamas. Go on, Captain Queer Nabs. Tell me I'm under arrest. Tell me! Is that that voltage? Damn your breads. Fly away, boy. Oh, back to your master. Aye. We was privateers together, before the wars ended. I'll see you ashore. Seven viewpoints, two contacts, twenty-two chests, five song sheets, thirteen animus fragments, and five secrets. Convenient because this, I can feel the shaking a lot less when I do it like this. Well, <coughs> uh, Captain, scared of combat. A group of Templar privateers recently ransacked merchant ships off the coast. Hiding with a stolen goods somewhere in town. Okay, it's somewhere on this island. That's good. Ah. 
up, lime, lime. Okay, song sheet. Well, it's on the ground. I feel suspicious. Where did it go? God damn it, climb! Don't you go, don't you go away now! God damn it! Keep saying this. Well, now what would in that be? Wait, fragment is up there. And the sheet <coughs> is over there. Had it. Why? Why should it be illegal? One out of twenty two. Coming, the women will say, with the trail sounding somewhere between fear and lust. Oh, yeah. Bye bye. Don't come here. <clears throat> At 
leave her Johnny. Lorena Torres Yayal, 1645 Cuba. Born in Havana but raised in Madrid, Spain, Lorena was of noble stock, the son of Thomas Torres y Ayala and Elvira de Quadrus Castellanos. He joined the Spanish army in his late teens and was later appointed as the governor of Spain's territories in Florida, a post he held from 1693 to 1699. He returned to Europe to participate in the Spanish War of Secession. In 1708, he was appointed as the governor of Cuba, a post he held for three years until he was accused of and arrested for corruption. He was acquitted of these charges, however, and managed to win a re-election bid in 1713. During his time in Cuba, he made many lasting improvements to the city, fortifying the island's defenses, and kick-started the production of tobacco there. He remained governor until 1716, after which point he retired and devoted his life to charitable functions such as building hospitals. Note. Hard guy to hate with all these charitable outlets. Hard guy to like for the same reason. Dull, dull, dull. Let's dig a little deeper on this guy. Maybe he has a secret fetish or mania. Wait, so... Where's the fragment? Over there. I need... to get over there. And get over there. Then when I'm over here, here's a fragment. Hmm. I see a pointer. here then viewpoint. This place restricted? I don't know. But that watchtower is something that you point something I want. to get up there. Don't mind me. There's another box? Ooh, okay. Yeah, I can see another box. Crocodile territory. There are lots of boxes. I don't know if I care to do all of them.
Bye. You there! Stop! <sighs> okay, how do I get this box? Climbable. And that tree won't walk. <clears throat> I don't understand. This tree? How do you climb this tree? <laughs> you can't climb this tree. Can you climb this? For some reason, you can't get up and grab that rock. Do that then. There's a box in here. Yeah. No. Climb. Climb. What's that? Alarm bell? Animals fragments. Manuscript. Harbour master. There was something there. Can I just fast travel over there? Interesting. Rack. <coughs> Where is the manuscript? Do I have to fight my way for it? Old mine. Oh no, you don't come back. Come back! Are you fearing us? Come back here and face us like a man! How about I just do this? Are you fearing us? <laughs> Consider the secret. Main mission. Contract. It's on the island, I just can't see it yet. Damn, there's a lot here to collect. Okay. Let's head for the main mission. Collect five pages.
Columbus map. Map of the world once used by navigator Christopher Columbus, Christopher Corombo, taken from the collection of Peter Beckford. Pirates, buccaneers, and privateers often used interchangeably. There are a number of important distinctions to make between these infamous high seas swashbucklers. Pirates, criminals in the open sea who use coercion, intimidation, and violence to rob innocent people of their cargo and transport. The term pirate is a catch-all and may be used generally to refer to all who perform acts of larceny on the open seas on the open ocean. Pirates have been a problem since the advent of long-distance ocean travel. Every age has seen its share of pirates, and every age has cursed their name and romanticized their cause. During the so-called Golden Age of Piracy, roughly 1650 to 1725, the majority of pirates were from the British Isles. Most were young men in their 20s, and almost all had already gained some experience as sailors prior to falling into piracy. Buccaneers. Though often used as a synonym for pirates, now the term buccaneer refers more specifically to a group of pirates who lived and operated in the West Indies in the middle of the 17th century. They were known for attacking settlements and fortifications on land in large groups. The buccaneers derived their names from the French term buccaneer, an instrument used for smoking strips of meat over an open fire. Favorite sort of sustenance for these terrestrial pirates. Privateers. Privateers were non commissioned sailors who attacked and robbed given a letter of mark by their king or their king's official, such as the governor. Thus, the distance between a pirate and a privateer is but a hair's breadth of difference. Pirates simply sail for one monarch fewer. Steed Bonnet. Born into plentitude and wealth on Barbados, Steed Bonnet seemed destined for a life of pleasure and ease. Son of a successful and influential plantation owner, his early life was marked by tragedy when his parents died suddenly, leaving seven year old Steed orphaned and in a perpetual state of melancholy. His inheritance of some 400 acres of land softened their blow caused by the loss of his parents, and by the time Steed was in his late teens, he had already restored the sugar plantation to a profitable state. Married young and set about starting a family as soon as possible, but owing to what some call the disorder of the mind, he never found solace or comfort in these domestic trappings. In order to complicate his unease, his firstborn son died in infancy, further amplifying his grief and stirring his restlessness. As a means of coping, he dreamed of going to sea and sailing about the world, meeting people, living life as a man, free of the obligations thrust upon him. This sounds like an inspiring story. Would he make a good hero character or villain? No, trust me. <laughs> He won't be a good, a good character. It's unbelievable, I'm still getting shaky. Okay, up the building. Okay, box. Tavern. This drinking spot, named after the King of Pirates, Henry Avery, was highly popular among gritty seafarers in the early 18th century. Legend had it that Avery himself once had a financial stake in several establishments throughout the West Indies, but that appears to be nothing more than self-promotion. Note, I believe it was burned to the ground by a disgruntled pirate in the 1750s. Disgruntled pirate? <laughs> what is a disgruntled pirate? The British Empire. The course of the 18th century saw the British Empire become the world's leading colonial power, with France and Spain as its primary rivals. After siding with the Netherlands and the Holy Roman Empire in the War of the Spanish Secession, the British Empire expanded, gaining territories from both Spain and France, and taking over control of the Atlantic slave trade in Spanish America. Over their global power, the Spanish defeated powerful adversaries such as the Aztecs and Incas in the Americas by exploiting existing conflicts and rivalries between tribes and nations between the 15th and 18th centuries. Note, and also by accidentally spreading disease, it wasn't all strategy. Inquisitive and protective of the supply of precious metals its new colonies afforded it, the Spanish Empire enthusiastically participated in the Atlantic slave trade and defended its trade routes aggressively. In 1701, Spain became embroiled in the War of Spanish Secession, at once international and civil, it ended with a series of treaties in 1713 and 1714, 
that saw King Philip V remain in power but lose his line to the French throne. Let's face it, he wasn't really using that thing anyway. Moreover, Philip kept his title of overseas emperor but relinquished much of his empire to the British who were granted the exclusive rights to slave trading in Spanish America for 30 years. The century was ne nevertheless one of, the prosperity, one of prosperity for the Spanish Empire as their trade reputation grew steadily under Bourbon oversight and continued to grow at an extraordinary rate until the 1780s. Gosh, I'm so glad they recovered from that slave trading loss. Philip V, what a trooper. What's up, Eddie? Now hiring. By God, you're a sight for salty eyes. Come you in and have a drink. Morning, all. I can wait. Who's this? My quartermaster. Adewale, the Jackdaw's quartermaster. Jackdaw. <laughs> you named your brig after a poxy bird. Adi, these lads are the better part of our growing confederacy here. Ed Thatch, Ben Hornigold, James Kidd. James Kidd! You let him carry a pistol, do you? Peace, Ben. Ade saved my life. And now we're looking to find a crew to fill out the rest of my ship. Well, there's scores of capable men about. But use caution. A shipload of the King's sailors showed up before night back, causing trouble and knocking about like they own the place. All right. I'll see who I can muster. Yeah, we're going to save each other, so... We're a package deal. This meter indicates your crew's strength. Crew is an essential resource that allows you to plunder ships. Bigger ships require more crew to board. There are two ways to recruit crew. You can hire people in the tavern, and you can help pilots in trouble. Send any men you find to the jackdaw. I'll put them to work. That is the plan. Okay, fragment first. Cheers, Addy. Huh. <laughs> Next. Viewpoint box and pilots. Guards while untacted before they kill their hostages. Really? You're willing to join now? Where's my box? Leave off, Rex! <sighs> I'm not some cold breath for picking! Truly senseless. Um. Shit. How do I climb this thing? Sink first. Find a fragment. Of course, it's over there. And then find a box. What the hell is it? What? The hell is this place?
Okay. Shanti. And see the treasures they have on offer. Actually, it's a good idea. First, I'll save them. Keep on going. Sail with long Ben himself, I heard tell. <laughs> Go for it again with the devil, strong soul. Um. You're welcome, I guess. Grazie. My thanks. I'm your man now, Capitano. If values what you seek travel no further this day, you found it. Ah! Well, I have to go into a shop. I can't just give me... A fair good day. The menu. Okay. El Cargo. Sugar. Sell everything. Make some money. Sell hunting goods. Buy hunting goods. Um, pistol set. Cannon barrel pistol. Spanish officer pistol. Pirate blunt bust. Yeah, I prefer my wheel lock. Range. What do we have for swords? French coat. Swords. More damage, more speed. Five four three four three four. I do want a high combo and I do want more speed. Damn, those are expensive. Those are the best, right? Okay, I'll take that. All right, ammo. Full. Full. I give you good day, sir. You don't come here. Okay, already saved pilots here and already saved pilots there. There's a contract over there, fragment and contract. Collect five song sheets. Five letters. Visit fifteen locations. Solve my puzzle. Low three underwater shipwrecks. Ah, underwater stuff. All two hundred animus fragments. Ten shark attacks. Synchronized viewpoints. Sure. Nothing just happens for me. Can you? Please, thank you. Uh. 
Okay. Next contract. The Art of Combat. A group of outlaws is responsible for a ranch of violence and mayhem in the city. They often congregate in the swamps just outside the city, kill their leader and end their attacks. That is slightly far away from me. Shanty. Ah, right, the, the ground shanty. Then pilots. Okay, pilots then shanty. Be ashamed to deny the people a day out of the game. <laughs> Why do you not listen to me? Captain Kenway, just in time. I'll see you back aboard. Lost full crew. Uh. Come here. Come here. Okay. Fragment. Patty Doyle's boots. Early in the morning. What will you do with a drunken sailor? What will you do with a drunken Benjamin Hornigold, mid 1680s. Benjamin Hornigold was likely born in Norfolk, England, although this has not been yet, yet been verified. All other information about his early life is unknown as yet. Thus, recorded instances of him or his early exploits as a pirate in the West Indies around 1713 1714. He was one of the earliest pirates to emerge after the end of the Spanish War of Secession, which gives us a good reason to believe he was one of the many hundreds of privateers who were left without gainful employment in the ensuing peace. Like many other British mariners, Hornigold spent much of his time in the Bahamas, eventually settling in Nassau, who from here launched his career as a full-fledged pirate, though he likely thought of himself as a privateer in his earliest years, at least. A skillful sailor and strategist, Hornigold lacked some of the ruthlessness Required to be a truly successful pirate and until 1716 refused to attack English ships out of a sense of loyalty to his own country. Note, a pirate with a sense of honor would make a superb hero, in my opinion. I've understood what can we don't plan out. Agreed. His lack of facial hair is a bonus. The beards on most of these guys look like owl's nests. <laughs> Up in the fort. <coughs> Do I have a way into the fort? <coughs> Whoa. How do you expect me to get that? Ridiculous. Final 
warning. I'll put you in a box. Try this turn. Tread long and spell current. That's a solution for me. Action, action. He's trying to play it. Listen to what he's telling. We can do it like this. No, I want to sneak up on them. Right. Hey, you. Over here. Well, if you're already here. How would you like to work for me? Wait, what was that? Reach the hanging, disarm and kill guards. Shoot the rope to save the pirate. What? What is that? What is that? West Indies Sea. I see, this is just a map of Nassau. No, this is another way up. This is a way up. Out of range? Damn it. Hang on a minute. Ow. Right, I want a viewpoint and I want to get to those sailors. This pirate bears the blood of oh, many on. innocents on his hands. His Majesty's. Honorable representative! Has clear shot on it? I've got a clear shot! No, you don't. Bastards have the sights! Oh! I've Just got to clear the trigger! Shot.
Oh, there's another one. You're not losing this. Faster. Hang on. I need to reload. Oh, I've got a, I got a clear shot. shot. Clear shot, Ow. Quick, over there. Ah! Oh, I've got a lovely clear shot. Hurry up, lads. He's trying to play us. I just have to pull this thing up. You're not losing this. Faster. Can't get away, cops. Um, can't you get out of the rest yourself? Whoa, 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 what the hell? Fine, let's get the fragment. Wait, what? I just came from here. Kill guards. I still want that fragment. Ugh. Fine. Captain Kenway, come fast. The sword is a captain man in iron. This pirate him. bears the blood of many innocents on. Reach the tavern. Fine, no fragment for me. But I can't have a box, right? The law should deal with him. Pulling his business. The law That thing is a sink point. Will no one come and show me how a proper man loves a woman? Not today. How and why is this thing here? Okay, there's a shanty. Tell me, Fezzik, please!
Tanava. Okay, manuscript. Hi. Just let me take it. One manuscript. The world map, 1570. Map the world by Abraham Ortelius, creator of what many consider to be the first modern atlas, once a part of Peter Berkshire's collection. Cool. Skewed like hell. Edward Thatch. Known variously by different sources as Thatch, Teach, Teach, Tash, Teach, Teach, Peck, and more. We are fairly certain his Edward was born. This Edward was born in or around Bristol and took to the sea at an early age, most likely in his teens. It is also speculated that he arrived in the West Indies quite soon after leaving England. If this was indeed the case, Ed Thatch would have seen this his fair share of the war of Spanish secession. A protracted fight between most of the empires of Europe defeated Britain against Royalist Spain and France. In his early years, from 1700 to 1713, he would have been a privateer or, at the very least, a merchant seaman, doing his part for the crown, Queen Anne at the time. Through the Treaty of Utrecht, bestowing peace upon the troubled Europe in 1713, Dutch and his fellow sailors would have found themselves far from home and out of work. They thus turned to piracy as a means of sustaining themselves. In the ensuing years, Thatch befriended a captain named Benjamin Horingold and soon after joined his crew as quartermaster, at some point between the late 1714 and early 1716. Setting, settling in Nassau, Thatch, Horingold, and the rest of the Flying Gang, as these pirates called themselves, began cooking up schemes far larger than most pirates of the era could dare to dream. Wanting nothing less than a country of their own, they worked to turn Nassau into a place of liberty and freedom for all who desired an escape from the bounds of imperial rule. James Kidd. James Kidd is a young man with a long and checkered past. Not yet of his teens, he is a cocky and confident lad with a brashness cultivated to counter his youth. He also claims to be of the bastard son of the late William Kidd, the infamous privateer turned pirate who was captured and hanged by British authorities in 1701. Although James has no proof of this connection, his mother had always insisted on it, claiming that she spent a single panicked night of passion with Captain Kidd just before his departure from London in 1695. Growing up fatherless and with its spendthrift mother did little to improve his prospects at leading a normal life, and by the age of 12 he had found employment aboard a merchant vessel sailing between the British colonies in North America and the West Indies. By the time he was 17, James called Jamaica his home and he further honed his skills as a sailor here. Although he never sailed with the likes of Ben Horingold, Earl Thatcher, or Edward Kenway, James was one of the first sailors to settle in Nassau, and was a crucial figure in his development as a republic. Let's grab that viewpoint. 633784. No. 606805. Yeah, this whole island is not it. I need to get up there. Okay. 
Okay, up here then. Climb. Uh, never mind, climb this. Oh look, a fragment. So there's a fragment there. Then <laughs> there's a manuscript there. Just low, just low. Let's go for manuscript. Um, does that count? Of the garden yet. Much easier. Thank you for your cooperation. Right, that's the secret. What's the secret? Solaris for Mundus Subterranus. An early image of the sun and its spots. Published in the 16th century by Athensius Kircher, thought to be from the collection of Peter Beckford. Wow. Wow. Woods Rogers. Woods Rogers was born into money to a seafaring family with deep roots in both Poole and Bristol, England. His early life was a picture of industriousness and ambition, and by the age of 18 he was an apprentice mariner. On his father's death at sea in 1706, Woods inherited his family's prosperous shipping company, which he took to managing with great passion. In 1704 and 1707, Rogers' fortune and family grew, and by the time he was 27, his marriage to Sarah Whetstone has produced one son and two daughters. By the end of 1707, however, his business had suffered great losses by raiding French forces, giving Rogers the idea to recoup these dreadful losses himself. Knocking about Bristol in search of a partner for his endeavor, he soon found himself in the company of William Dampier, an old friend and unlucky captain who suggested setting out on a privateering expedition, one that could range far and wide about the, world, the New World. In 1708, Rogers made the necessary arrangements and set out as captain of his own vessel, on a difficult voyage that would last long. Hello. Along his course, Rogers met with many successes and failures. In 1709, on the western coast of South America, he found and rescued a maroon sailor by the name of Alexander Selkirk, a sailor who had spent nearly four years living in isolation and who would serve as the inspiration for the book Robinson Crusoe. Just a few years later, soon after Selkirk's recovery, Rogers' fleet engaged in an enemy vessel in open combat, a skirmish that earned him a pistol shot to the left side of his face and a mangled heel. Neither wound was enough to remove him from command, however and he continued serving as captain until his return to England in his late 1711. To commemorate his return, he had an operation to remove the offending bullet from his upper palate. That's incredible! Can we make an entire film about him? Then, in poor health and high spirits, Wood set about writing his memoirs. Upon their publication a few years, they were an immediate success and proved a great source of income, but this grief Brief glory was offset by the sudden death of his son, a tragedy compounded some months later by his wife's decision to leave him. Also at this time, Rogers was sued by former shipmates for allegedly hoarding goods and money plundered from enemy vessels. 
which was assembled the defense but lost the case. In 1713, itching to return to sea, he organized passage to Madagascar, claiming to be a merchant in the slave trade, but with the intended purpose of reconnoitering the rumored pirate colonies established there. When he arrived in Madagascar after months of hard sailing, he found that the legends of the pirate town Libertalia had been exaggerated 100-fold. The pirates in Madagascar were sickly and few and desperate for help. After spending just a few months here, Rogers set sail for England, a failure in his own mind, and yet never want to give up hope, was Rogers reoriented himself to the West Indies, eventually lobbying King George for a commission to hunt pirates in the Caribbean. On this score, he succeeded. After a few diligent years of making his case, King George appointed Woods Rogers as the governor of the Bahamas. Now at last, he would make his mark and bring justice to a land where chaos had taken root. Damn. Okay. Next target. Fragment. I still have it unavailable. Why? Can we do this? Why? Why is it unavailable? Because I'm in the hostile zone? Can I do it now? I don't get it. So if it's just over here, might as well take it. Come on, man. You gotta move on. for the fragment. <coughs> That's it. Alarm bell. Alarm bell. Okay. Manuscript. <laughs> that was a scarecrow. the manuscript Anonymous Tabula Rudolphinae Taken from the Tabula Rudolphinae by Jonas Kepler, possible connection to Emperor Rudolf II on the back for the state's collection Coconut Beach, small sandy islands that grow almost nothing but coconut trees It was not uncommon for pirates to maroon their foes on such islands Florida 
One of the several indigenous tribes of the Florida Peninsula was colonized by Spain some decades after Ponce de Leon's expedition explored the peninsula in 1513. During the age of West Indies piracy, Spanish treasure ships would sail up the Gulf Stream on their journey back to Cadiz. Southern Florida therefore became a natural point of attack for pirates, and the Florida Keys a center of pirate recruitment. In particular, tropical storms famously shipwrecked several Spanish treasure fleets on the shores of Florida. Pirates and others flocked out to pick up through the wreckage and attack any survivors protecting the treasure. Low. Low. Target. Why is it not available? Why? The assassination target is on top of this building. We have gunners. to come over. No? Really? Nothing? Do you have any shots? Supposed to avoid open conflict. No, well. Anything good? No. Okay, crocodiles. Test. Viewpoint. Destination. Jackdaw. No fast travel. Shanty, I missed. I'll be back. Let's start with this. Oh, it's the box I couldn't reach. Jump already. <coughs> Okay. Uh, how am I supposed to do this?
Oh. It's not the box I couldn't reach. Oh, it's got some money in it. No. Viewpoint. Well, big. <laughs> Here. Okay, I guess we're climbing that. We have a box. What? Oh, it's another ship. I know you have it. Why is my camera dirty? Okay, just mark the fragment. Of course it's at the top of the mast. The top of the main mast. Excuse me, PC coming through. And with cost. I think there's no way to get down to get to the other mast. Can I do this? Oh, okay. Oh, shit.
end of the main mast. Stop doing that. Yeah, I know, there's no good reason to be doing this. Okay, can I hit the water? From here, I need to get... Why the hell is it unavailable? What's the point of having fast travel if it's unavailable? These houses look like they're built out of scrap. I have arrived. Now you'll want to sail somewhere rich with plunder. Have you heard of a place called the Observatory? Aye. It's an old legend, like El Dorado or the Fountain of Youth. What have you heard? It's meant to be a temple or a tomb, hiding a treasure of some kind. That's it. You see here. Oh, oh rot. It's fairy stories you prefer a gold, is it? It's worth more than gold, Thatch. Ten thousand times above what we could pull off any Spanish ship. Robbing the king to pay his porpoise is how we earn our keep here, lad. It ain't a fortune. It's a fantasy. Is James Kidd really a uh, uh, woman? Meh. Yeah, lots of stuff to pick up. Wait, there's a game, and there's a tavern. The game is. Kenway is it not? The sailors. Recruit. Twenty. Sure. Okay. Hey, yeah. The game is... Oh, this one. No, I don't feel like it. Maybe these games are kind of a waste of time. Let's start what a bar fight. Or oh, not. Way I see it, if you were to make your way, I was made there to have a good opportunity. What did we get? Naval Convoy by Tortuga This bag The bag Elithira by Tortuga Where the hell even am I? Okay Mission. 
But I think this is where I'll stop for today. Cat. Cat. So I'll just get down and that'll be the end for today. Lasers and plunder. Only golden patch. Yeah. Sitting, smoking. That's what you're doing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna stop now and get out of the animus. And this field of view is horrible. So freaking horrible. But here, we have some messages. We have files. Employee passport. Passport to success, set up Stargo Entertainment. And we have new messages. Melanie LeMay. Bonne vue, welcome. Your communicator is your key to success here at Stargo Entertainment. Please keep it with you at all times. Should you lose your communicator, contact the front desk. Recovery fee of $100 will be deducted from your next paycheck. Please respect your non-disclosure agreement. Our work here is exciting and confidential. Security breaches will not be tolerated. Have a great week! John from IT. Hey, John here. Nice meeting you. If you have any problems with your animus, feel free to shoot me a message. I don't extend this privilege to everyone, but Melanie tells me you know your stuff. Good enough for me. You don't know who, the, who we're actually playing in the real world. M.O. Baudreux. Nice to meet you. I just wanted to say it's so good having a new face on the team. This is a great place to work, but some people can get a little negative at times. You know what I mean. Let's get a coffee later. Evan Dean. Welcome aboard. Ahoy, mate. Welcome to the good ship of Stego Entertainment, where everything is always jolly and we all love our work to death. Glad to have you aboard. I hope you're fun. Last guy was a little dull and, well, just kidding. See you around. Chloe Lesney. Hey there. Welcome to the team. We should have lunch sometime, once you're settled. Can I actually talk to people around here? Spread into people's homes. Wow, this is going to change everything. Can I talk? People? Hmm. This is my workstation. This is... Uh, the field of view is killing me. Oh, it's pointing to the notes. Ah, as our tools of genetic expressions of our mental cultural activity, and as we are expressions of the mental cultural activity, it must necessarily follow that this world as it is now and as it ever will be is an expression of the first will, an expression of the, their labors, and thus belongs to us, but to them. The wild, the chaos, the dead networks now crisscross the globe are hers. They must become her body and her mind. You remember how the last game ended? <laughs> Ooh. What does my sticky you note know, say? Being that life is both sacred and profane, priceless and worthless, fleeting and eternal, we submit. Being that life can be as easily construed from primordial swamps as from a stinking petri dish, we submit. Being that those who came before imbued us with life and may remove it as readily should we defy or deny the original plan, we submit. Damn. Oh look! Assassin's Creed 3 and Liberation. And it's from Ubisoft. And we have Assassin's Creed 3 Black Flag. The art of Assassin's Creed 3 Black Flag. Assassin's Creed 1st, I think? Mundus Subterraneous. Lots of Assassin's Creed books. <laughs> I 
more Assassin's Creed books. Okay, look around the office next time. Thanks for watching. Stay good, have fun. <laughs>